Well, for the first time in five years, the Democratic Alliance has taken control of the capital city's administration comfortably. Mayor Randall Williams' administration uh, seems to be starting off on a good foot, despite opposition parties slamming his new executive. Smaller parties helped the DA secure victory, but this, of course, didn't come without reward. Our reporter, Govan Whittles, is following the story for us. He joins us now live. So, Govan, let's talk about this coalition agreement and how it's being described by these parties. Well, it's being described as a breakthrough and a possible platform for them to take over the country in 2024. That's what John Steenhuisen and Herman Mashaba said they intend to do with the agreement that's been signed today. And they've described it as such because it effectively sets the ground rules for how these six parties and uh, other smaller parties in different areas will be in interacting over the five-year term. Um, and it's essentially also another campaign to try and bring about some unity and test what it may be like in 2024 if they are given the opportunity to form a coalition government. So John Steenhuisen is uh, unsurprisingly very happy with the outcome of the agreement. That's even as the caucuses in Johannesburg, in Tswane and in Ikuruleni are unhappy in the DA with how the seats were allocated because, of course, it meant that fewer of them were able to get into mayoral committees as well as chairpersons of oversight portfolio committees as well. So there is a lot of work to do going forward, but let's have a look at what John Steenhuisen had to say about this agreement. I think today is a historic day because I think that today lays, lays the foundation for the next big thing in South African politics, and that's the 2024 election. And I'm very, very pleased that we have, as political parties, been able to find each other around a common set of values and principles. And I think that that is what's distinguished this process from, from processes that have gone before, that we started with the values and principles and the objectives of what we would like to achieve for the residents in each of those cities, and we worked backwards from there. The last thing that we were discussing were positions. And I think that shows the commitment of every single one of the parties represented here that our goal is to put the people in the cities that we govern first and foremost and uppermost in our thoughts. For far too long in metropolitan areas around South Africa, the people have been left on the back burner. And it is the politicians who've inserted themselves and pushed themselves to the front of the queue. The devil is really in the detail, Govan, and we know that the DA said their coalition agreements will be made public. Is that the case now? And what are analysts saying about the way forward? That is the case, Shahan, and I've had a look at the, the agreement, and it sets out a, a number of provisions in which they intend to use to, to manage the coalition, essentially. They've separated the uh, dispute resolution process into three categories, uh, which deals with the local municipal level, which could be uh, dealt with in the municipalities, and then escalates it further to the national level if it's a, a crisis with the municipality. And then also another section where um, national leaders are brought in if there's a crisis within the coalition with one of the parties, parties being unhappy and wanting to leave uh, the coalition. Those are some of the clauses that are in the agreement. Um, it does, in fact, give the electorate an opportunity to judge each of the parties by how they adhere to these agreements with their leadership having now signed it. And these parties have made it clear, Shahan, that their objective is to get the ANC out of power. Um, and they said that when it comes to government, they intend to have political staff in their political offices, but they want the coalition governments to appoint um, South Africans who are fit for purpose, who are outside of the political circles for administrative positions, signaling to the electorate um, that they're trying to put an end to what they call paid employment. Um, so they have put a lot on the table. This agreement certainly does hold them to a certain standard. Let's have a look at what one analyst had to say about how the Democratic Alliance should conduct itself in this coalition. We don't know what are the details of the coalition agreement. But what we know is that in a, in a coalition or in, in an agreement or in any form where different parties have to come together, there should be a compromise because it's a give and take situation. The Democratic Alliance has been quite disparate in ensuring that they run these councils and they, they knew that they couldn't run them on their own. They would require other parties. 
and the uh, compromise also had to come on the part of the Democratic Alliance members or councillors, those that thought that they might get a positions in the council, their positions are now given to other political parties. It will therefore mean that the Democratic Alliance had to sacrifice some of their members in favor of other political parties that are in a coalition. Mm -hmm. What we need to look very closely is as to whether this coalition agreement is actually going to run for a longer period of time based on what they actually agreed upon, or as to whether there are clauses that actually put strict regulations on the conduct of members of the coalition. All right, we're going to leave that right there. Our reporter, Govan Whittles, is covering that story for us.